A little while ago, I uploaded a video of me building a, a computer just for Blueberry playback and whatnot. I absolutely liked how that thing came out, but I wanted something a little more smaller, a little more compact that I could actually hide behind my TV. So I was originally planning on getting one of these small Dell Optiplexes, and I managed to finally grab one. This is from, again, my local Free Geek. Since I'm a volunteer, I managed to buy this as a bare bones unit. For my particular Free Geek, a bare bones unit is basically everything excluding the RAM. So basically motherboard, CPU, power supply, case, and whatnot. So since I already had everything else at the house, I decided to buy it that way. This thing right here cost me 60 bucks, and I did a little bit of an oopsie. I have a few uh, Blu-ray slim drives, but apparently there are even slimmer uh, Blu-ray drives that are out there. These, this thing's like a 12 millimeter something slim, while the drive in here is a nine and a half mil. This is just a standard DVD drive. So I really can't use my Blu-ray drives I currently got in this thing. Luckily though, there are 9.5 mil uh, slim DVD uh, Blu-ray drives out there that I could buy. And apparently there is one I could buy that could also be uh, converted over so it can read and rip uh, 4K Blu-rays. Since most of my Blu-rays are 1080p and I don't see a need for 4K, I don't really need to get that Blu-ray drive, but considering it has that option, I'm probably gonna end up buying it anyways. And the only reason why I might end up doing that is because, again, my main TV is a 4K TV. And if I ever come across 4K uh, Blu-rays of anime or whatever I want to have, I want to have that ability to be able to fully back it up. So with that said, let me get this thing taken apart and uh, kind of show you what the inside looks like. I mean, it's a Dell Optiplex. It's not really that interesting. Here's what the inside looks like. Power supply, CPU cooler, CPU and the little uh, tray for the hard drive and DVD drive and whatnot. Luckily, it is fairly easy to pull out. All you gotta do is pop these little tabs, pull the front panel off, unlock the uh, little tab here, pull this cable, and lift it. And of course, with that lifted off, we now get access to the uh, two, four, two uh, DR4 sticks and an NVMe slot. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the 500 gig NVMe out of another computer and I'm going to put it in this thing because again, this thing is actually going to serve a purpose and I want to at least have a somewhat high capacity uh, main boot drive that I can use to uh, temporarily store uh, like movies and whatnot before I fully transfer them over to the main bulk drive, which is going to be currently a two terabyte out of, out of uh, a iMac I got to pull out too, but uh, one thing at a time. So let me get this thing uh, kind of situated and I'll come back. The NVMe I'm using is the NVMe out of my uh, Legion Go. It's a 512, which is going to be more than enough. And it, again, if I really want to upgrade this thing down the road to a higher capacity drive, it will be easy to do that. I plan on eventually doing that, but since I just want to get this thing up and running, make sure it actually fully works, this will do the job just fine. And plus, like I said, I'll be able to upgrade it down the road. For long-term use, I am very much going to be swapping out that 500 gig NVMe because this really isn't the proper way to attach this thing. I did try to pull this thing out, but I can't get it to pull out. And if I do it any harder than I was, because I was trying to pull it out with uh, this right here, I'll probably just end up breaking the board. So I just basically taped it together, both uh, with duct tape on the edge here, clear tape right here with a little pull tab. That way I can easily pull everything out when I want to do the upgrade. And so uh, yeah, it'll work just fine. It'll just be ugly on internally. Well, for some reason or other, this computer under Windows 7, at least install, does not want to show the actual NVMe that I have plugged into the motherboard. With that said, in the BIOS, it shows up completely fine. So, it looks like I'm unfortunately forced to put Windows 10 on this thing. Ew. So, let me get Windows 10 installed on this thing and come back. Ah, yes. A BIOS update. Lovely. Well... As you can already tell, Windows 10 installed completely fine. With that said, now the scary part. Updating the files that I didn't know needed to be updated. Lovely. Alright, got the computer set up. I'm running a 4K YouTube video at 4K. And of course, it's also running at 60 FPS. And I want to see if I get any dropped frames. Obviously, I got one, which is to be expected, but... I want to see what the long term is like. So I'm going to let this video run its course, which is about like 4 minutes. And we'll see if we have any more dropped frames after the video is complete. Alright, video play completely fine. And now the drop, well, 
one drop the frame and I think we're good to go. So the next step is to get the uh, Blu-ray uh, playback set up and whatnot and uh, see how that works. All right, got a Blu-ray disc and drive and it's playing it just fine. So the next step to do is to uh, get make MV installed on this thing so I can actually start ripping these discs and whatnot again. And the live concert DVD or blue. And luckily the live concert Blu-ray also works completely fine too. So the next step to do is to buy a slightly thinner Blu-ray drive for this computer here. And then also get a two terabyte hard drive for this thing, which I believe I'll have if uh, everything goes as planned over my local Free Geek today. And I'll be able to get this thing set up maybe like Friday or Saturday of this week, dependent. It just depends on how things uh, line up. All right, little time and spats. I decided to pull the heat sneak out to see how dry the thermal paste is. And the thermal paste is really, really dry. It's basically rock hard. So yeah, I mean, I knew I had to replace the thermal paste on this thing, but I didn't know it was that dry. So I'm going to do that. Now, I don't have any really good thermal paste, but considering this is more than likely a fairly low watt chip, the thermal paste I do got will be more than adequate for this thing. All right, apparently some time has passed and I completely forgot about this video. With that said, not much has really changed. I'm about to order the uh, Slim Blu-ray drivers in a few days now, actually. And I decided to also pull the NVMe drive out of my small little HP Thin Client thingy. This HP Elite desk right here. Reason being is because this thing already has one little job. And it's meant to let me uh, connect to a few of my main backup drives to pull data to and from and whatnot. I don't use this thing that often. And I was thinking, okay, if I'm going to have one computer behind my, uh, or have the Dell Optiplex and this behind my uh, TV, why not see if I can uh, run Windows 7 on, a, on an Optiplex and just make that thing pull double duty that way so I can just make it a little more cleaner. And as you can see, it handles Windows 7 completely fine. I just got done getting the uh, VLC set back up again for a Blu-ray playback. I just got done listening to a little bit of a song again and well, everything seems to work. So this little computer here is not gonna pull double duty. So what I need to do now is I need to order that thinner Blu-ray drive, get that installed, and then I'll be able to actually fully set this thing up and actually have just one computer behind my TV for basically everything. So, uh, I'll come back in a couple days when that Blu-ray drive comes in. When it comes to this HP Elite desk, I am still going to use it, but I'm going to use it for a different task. Uh, I'm pretty sure most people that follow my YouTube channel, which is like five, would know that uh, mostly what I want to try to, or initially what I was doing with my YouTube channel, was building life-size anime figurines. I still want to do that. I know when my next anime convention is going to start, so I'm going to actually start rebuilding one of my characters. And to do that, I have a few uh, printers. I have a very nice Epson EcoTank I got from my local Free Geek that I do not connect to the internet. One, because I physically can't because Wi-Fi on this thing's busted. And two, I'd much prefer to have these things hardwired. Hence the little HP right there I have set up just for printing on this computer here. Then I have my main guy right here. This is an HP Office Grade I got from my local Free Geek for 25 bucks. It's uh, this guy right here. And I also have this HP Office Grade also. This is not as high end, but still an HP Office Grade nonetheless. Now this is my main one. And obviously I'm not connecting this one to the internet. Now, with that said, I do have a few ways I could actually print from it. One is this very nice 2013 5K iMac. This is running Mac OS and Windows 10. But if I'm going to print from my uh, HP printer right here, I want to use Windows 7. And that's because, again, I just want to be able to print from this computer, uh, use something I can print from this thing and nothing more. Hence, again, why I have the little HP hooked up to the Epson. And my idea is once I get the Dell Optiplex all situated, to get this thing rebuilt and set it up just for the uh, HP printer in the uh, kitchen. Because again, the one in the kitchen is my main printer. I do have that nice Epson, but that HP is what I fall back on. And if all else fails, I do want to at least have something I can use to print from that thing. And of course, HP being HP has a 
locked out their printers if you like connect them to the internet or something and i'm not going to risk my 25 dollar very expensive high-end office grade printer when i can just set up a small little computer just to print stuff from and whatnot with that said when it comes to the uh, figure i'm going to be building i'm actually going to try and get it all done on that epson eco tank but uh i'm not going to get it in this video because this video is about getting my uh getting a computer set up for blu-ray playback and storage and I want to try and keep on track, but I want to give a little update of what I'm going to do with this little guy when I manage to get the Octoplex fully situated. So I'll come back in about a few days. All right, some days have passed. I finally got myself my uh, new Blu-ray player. This one is supposed to fit the, uh, the Octoplex I got because it's a little bit more thinner. And it's also supposed to be apparently a UHD. So if I really want to do a 4K uh, playback and ripping, I'll have that ability with this drive. But for right now, I'm not going to modify the firmware or anything like that. I just want to make sure this drive works with the Blu-rays and whatnot. And I don't see why it wouldn't. So I'll come back in a little bit and we'll uh, put this in my uh, Dell Optiplex and see if everything works. Alright, got the drive in the computer. Hopefully everything just works. Well, I'll definitely be able to hear it spin up. With that said, it should just automatically start on the TV here. Alright, it looks like it works completely fine. Yay. Yep, it plays Blu-rays completely fine. So with that said, I'll do all the other stuff off camera, like it make MKV installed and whatnot, and eventually figure out if I can actually uh do Blu-ray uh or 4K Blu-ray rips, but like I said, I need a 4K Blu-ray to actually test that, and currently I don't have a 4K Blu-ray of something I like, so I'm going to be stuck with 1080p, and plus I'm totally fine stuck with 1080p. All that matters is that I can rip this type of stuff right now, and now I have that ability to. Also, it's only noisy on the initial spin-up. When it's actually just reading or playing like it is right now, it's basically quiet. The only thing I'm actually hearing from this computer now is just the uh, CPU and the GPU fan. The thing is, well, as you can tell very quiet but uh yeah i'm happy i finally have a proper blu-ray playback and uh storage computer